Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So guys, I was, I've been taking a couple of uh, mock interviews and then uh, although we were not publishing it on YouTube, but uh, there were some really good candidates. And today again, we have one more candidate and then I thought of uh, uh, recording it and then uh, taking a, uh, you know, interview. Uh, just want to give you the practical uh, exposure on how exactly we okay. take interviews and how exactly you can prepare for the interviews and everything. That will really, really help us. I connected, uh, we have one candidate, uh, Shubhodhya. I connected with her through LinkedIn and I think she's quite active on LinkedIn as well. And uh, she's having a really good uh, impressive resume that I have seen that and really good impressive profile. And um, good thing is that uh, she's having good uh, eight to 10 years of experience. And then we can uh, talk about uh, uh, different in terms of uh, testing, in terms of uh, basic level of automation. I'm not expecting only for automation. I'm expecting overall uh, testing things over here. And I really want to see that, okay, what the testing mindset and what kind of approaches and uh, how exactly she uh, is a good fit for my team or something like this. This is what I really want to uh, get out of, uh, you know, from her in terms of testing. So Shubhodhya, uh, welcome to uh, to the mock interview. We don't have any panel right now, so now you can start your webcam and then maybe. So uh, hi, hi, how are you Shubhodhya? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Great. Nothing such. I'm just staying back home safe. <laughs> okay, great, Shubhadeya. So, Shubhadeya, I have uh, your resume with me, and then uh, I think uh, you're applying for uh, a senior QA profile because you have have more than eight years of experience. So, I would like to know what exactly you're doing in terms of uh, testing and what's your experience. Quickly, just give me within uh, within uh, two to three minutes. Just explain what exactly you're doing in terms of uh, testing. What's your role in the last company, and then. Uh, where exactly your major uh, strength over there in terms of testing? Um, in my earlier experience, I was working as a lead. Uh, we had a team of uh, four to six members. Uh, we were testing a management plugin uh, with respect to one big application, which was into cloud appliance, which was managing mm -hmm. the cloud appliance. So uh, that that part is something like very challenging because we were having knowledge on firmware. We had to uh, test with knowledge on, I mean, uh, test with our knowledge on hardware, software, firmware, all these variants were there. So this was making more complex and challenging at the same time because we have multiple uh, variations across multiple metrics. So that was the one of the uh, nicest uh, projects which I have worked on. Currently I'm on a break. So I started my career okay. in Global Edge and uh, that's about it. This is the journey. So may I know like why this break? Like you have uh, deliberately like taken it or that something happened in this pandemic situation? Um, it can be both the ways because I was finding it very stressful. Mm -hmm. Stressful as in weekend meetings and early morning. I'm a morning person. So my day starts at six and uh, it used to end at 12 in the night. So I started having regular migraines. So I thought it is high time to take a break. Mm -hmm. So for health reason, I took a break. For two months, I did nothing else, just relax. And now I am back on track for preparation. So Jan second week, I'm expecting some good calls. Okay, good. I think yeah, January um, onwards, the market will be up and again, and then maybe a best of luck for that. Okay, uh, okay. So uh, Shubhadeh, tell me, uh, I can see your resume with me that uh, I have that you having some really good experience in terms of uh, different uh, uh, cloud platforms. You have uh, good experience on VMware, Windows, ESX, uh, Linux, OS, and all those things. So, what exactly you are doing in terms of security testing over here? Are you doing any security level testing or any authentication for your APIs? Do you have any expertise in that particular area? No, no. Unfortunately, no. I'm into system testing. Uh, security is mm -hmm. part of system testing, but it was being mm -hmm. dealt with uh, some more diligent test group of testers. I was into uh, okay. system testing where end to end as a user end to end experience. How mm -hmm. exactly is the platform that part of uh, testing? Okay. So, uh, so what makes you different? Uh, because you are having eight plus years of experience. So what makes you different from other candidates from other testers that? Okay. Yeah. Why should I hire you? Okay. As a tester, how exactly you will be fit for my team? I'm not looking for rockstar in automation. I'm looking for a good testing mindset. So just give me five important points that okay, just prove that okay, you are a you are a really good tester and good fit for any any company. Mm, I'm curious. 
which is very important mm -hmm. and i have never said i spirit which is second most quality of mine i won't get bored doing repeated things meaning it doesn't mean that i want to do mundane things but sometimes we may have mm -hmm. to have a lot of patience i have patience and the mm -hmm. third thing is um i i i uh, generally what i do is mm -hmm. like i am a meticulous reader so i read a lot i do research a lot before starting any project or any few new feature testing so that is one more good quality mm -hmm. i am very good at collaboration because testing is something where we have to collaborate with different people and different uh, mm -hmm. levels of people be it if it is we are in hardware testing then you have to have a good uh, knowledge on who is who which machine is with them so that you never know when you need those things so those kind of things i'm okay. good at it so i think i'm good so you are more of a, a, a team person or you always prefer individual contributor just tell me quickly like in one line individual contributor so if Though i tell I okay, you have eight, to work but... with 10 different testers sorry so let's see if i say that okay no we have a requirement that where you have to work with the team uh, eight to ten different team members are there and they all are testers uh won't you be comfortable with that team yes uh, i'm comfortable both the ways in <laughs> that way i'm an amphibian so i'm fine okay okay good okay so let's uh, start with the other things so let's see i give you a couple of situations over here because you are a, a senior person and i'm expecting i really want to know what's what what's your experience so whatever the genuine experience you have faced uh, so far in your career you must have seen some certain situations when you were working as a tester so let's see there is a production bug suddenly uh, and it got missed by by the team you don't know which team either dev team or maybe qa team or maybe that feature totally missed by the developers in terms of uh, coding was not there and then and the or maybe the test case was missing from the qa side and if there is a big impact on the business and the customer and then the management is asking that uh, who is responsible for that so as a qa guy what is your responsibility to check that okay hey what are the different uh, actions you will be doing that what are different uh, practices you will be following to check that okay it, it got missed by uh, by the qa team or by by someone else so what are different things you will be performing with this uh, this is very unfortunate situation but unfortunately we will be in this situation many a times in real time scenario there will not be like no production bugs at all so first thing what we will be doing is analysis finding the root cause of this uh, why defect has leaked so we will see the mm -hmm. defect rejected defects and we will see the um, what do you say uh, um, defects which have been leaked uh, leaked in the sense in earlier historical data we will pull so that actually gives us a lot of confidence, a lot of data, first thing. And second thing is, we will simultaneously try to reproduce the same exact customer environment, where exactly is the problem? Is it with the environment or is it with our build or many other parameters? This root cause analysis is very important to get the data. That is first thing. And the second thing is, assume that um, it is from our side so we will again drill down deeper deeper in terms of not a person who has done that in terms of miss um, uh, coverage strategy that so backlog just to interrupt you uh, Shavadia, just to interrupt you that we say that generally quality is a team responsibility but uh, it is after your investigation after your rca the root cause analysis we got to know that okay it's clearly missed from the qa team so how will you handle the situation we, my management is asking this question to, to you as a senior guy as a senior person over there and then how will you uh, defend the situation how will you tackle the situation um defending or tackling it depends on the situation again uh, assuming that it's missed from our side i'll be very straightforward and upfront saying that it's our mistake because owning up it is always matters a lot so that is one clear communication and second thing is why it is uh, Asking right questions will help us to find the right answers. Why, how, when, they, when, and all these questions, we will do this. This analysis is very important in terms of either there might be misunderstanding from a tester's perspective or from the knowledge the training perspective, or it can be anything, or be it some firmware version change like this. Okay, so some hypothetical uh, situations I'm giving right now, uh, but in that precise so environment. Within the team, 
within the QA team, as a senior person, let's say you have five team members are there in QA. So within the team at the technical level, what are different actions or uh, practices you are going to follow to make sure that, okay, this time, next time we should not get such kind of bugs. Uh, first thing is uh, coverage. I'm going to go through coverage mm -hmm. that analysis because this is clear case of missing because we have not covered that particular area. So it Pareto principle, 80% mm -hmm. of the defects are from 20% of the area. So that coverage we are going to target because that is going to help us and second thing is mm -hmm. if there are any regression defects we are going to see that also because there could be a potential defect in that area so like this we will have different strategies okay okay so tell me one thing that um, let's talk about your automation experience so what is your experience in automation? Just tell me what exactly you were doing in from last couple of projects, especially from last two, three years. Were you totally involved into automation or you were just contributing for automation? I was on the receiving end. I, somebody used to build the automation tools. So whenever I need some uh, tasks to get automated, I used to take the request. I used to send the request and team was there. So unfortunately, I didn't get a hands on on those kind of things. So mm -hmm. that is why I took break to go through the basics and build my skills and uh, refer some mm -hmm. channels and like yours and uh, other stuffs. And I'm reading a lot of things right now doing personal projects. So that's mm -hmm. it. That is my uh, thing. Okay. So here I have a so scope. Have you ever used any... That's good. Okay. Have you have uh, do you have any experience? Of mobile uh, mobile testing i'm not talking about our automation but testing on the mobile devices or different other devices do you have any experience on that um i was testing one hp sprout system which was more of like all in one mm -hmm. system you have a monitor you have mat which is like touch mat and you have a projector so that was like windows 10 uh, running on windows 10 machine it was more of like a big mobile so uh, we mm -hmm. were testing different and uh, installing different apps and we were testing voice patches and stuff like that. So okay. that's that kind of experience. So, uh, can you explain me uh, in your current uh, project, let's see your recent project, the last project, just talk about uh, a very brief about uh, maybe quickly that about uh, the release process, how exactly you guys were releasing, what are different environments you were having and then how many regression cycles uh, you can talk about the regression cycle also how exactly you were maintaining the test case execution cycles and everything so what what was the role for the qa in that particular release cycle if you can talk about that we were having agile model uh, so basically we will mm -hmm. i entered when i entered the project it was already ongoing project so there were already testers uh, who were executing tests in every sprints we have sprints in agile we have sprints of like two weeks uh, I mean, um, the main challenge which we had seen here is for testing, we will be getting build on last day of the sprint. So mm -hmm. it was uh, for, uh, I mean, and uh, in the meeting, we used to test that. So this was the first challenge which I observed. And then we were having work around like when to get the build cycles properly so that QA can get time to test those. So there were multiple regression cycles, after, assuming that uh, this uh, build cycle is fine and we were uh, having less regression defects then we will have uh, one staging environment where we were testing end to end so after, tell me one thing like when will you okay so when will you stop the testing from your side when you give the green signal that okay yeah the testing is uh, done from our side so at which, on which at which point you will stop the testing uh, unfortunately, testing is never ending, but we can't keep on testing our project mm -hmm. forever, right? So customer has to use it. Mm -hmm. So we will have, have a clear deliverable set in the beginning of the mm -hmm. project. So those things, if we have met it, like pass percentage, this many, uh, I mean, uh, like 95% of passage, and there is no stop, uh, I mean, blockers, and uh, there are cosmetic defects which are not impacting to the extent that customer notices it. So these kind of there are different mm -hmm. criteria based on the projects. So then we can say that uh, testing has delivered the good quality product. So again, okay, it is a management. So let's see, management is saying that okay, yeah, okay. So let's see, you have found 50 bucks in the regression cycle, okay. and then you raised it. And developers they have fixed around uh, let's see 30 bucks they have fixed. 
it's still being a 20 bucks. Note of it, just a second. Just a second. 50 I mean, bucks. Just a, uh, 50 bucks you raised and 20, huh? uh, 30 bucks they have already closed. And uh, 10, 20 left. And those are 20 very minor bucks. Let's see, I would say uh, P4 or P5 uh, C, oh, priority or maybe the severity is very low. Those are not at all uh, critical, but we have only one critical issue. And management is saying that, okay, now maybe we can do it in the next release, let's release it. How will you, uh, will you allow to do this or uh, or you will give you a green signal as a QA sign off or you will you raise a concern over there? If, if it is critical, that means it is a concern for mm -hmm. us. But having said that, we uh, there are multiple hierarchies. So on that, I, I, I'll be telling from QA perspective, as a user, how I will feel, that would be my thought mm -hmm. process. But in a long run, if management feels that they are confident enough, then they can go ahead. But tomorrow they should not come back and say that we have found this defect, the which one we have, um, the one which we have missed it. So it, it's both the, the ways. Management it is is not like behind the releases. Let's see, management is yeah. not uh, ready to take your decision and management is not ready to do that. After two hours, today is the final release and suddenly you got one critical bug. First of all, it should have been, uh, you know, found uh, earlier stage, but let's see today in the morning you got the bug and then uh, that is a critical bug, but it's not a blocker. We have some workarounds. So uh, that is the question that uh, how will you handle it? Will you allow the QA sign off or you will say that you will try to force them to uh, fix the bug first and then uh, do a basic round of sanity and then release it? Um, I'll try to go with the second way. I'll just try and do a sanity quick sanity because it's always important mm -hmm. that it is not breaking anything. And uh, again, it's a risky, but once we release also will not stop our testing because for a while it, it is not that for next two, three days we will be doing just will quickly do that and we will be keeping informed what has happened so far. So okay. it's, it's a very tricky situation okay. you put me in. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Uh, okay, so tell me in your uh, last project or maybe last couple of projects, what was the best uh, bug that you have found and you feel proud that okay, yeah, people and everyone appreciated you that okay, yeah, that was really a, a out of the box bug and that uh, that was already maybe could be possible already there in the production, but when you joined that particular team that you found that particular bug, do you have any incident in your career where you have found some very special bug? Um, one personal uh, favorite is there, two favorites. <laughs> one is with respect to, um, uh, what do you say, the copyright. Okay, I, I, there is a small story. Uh, if I'm allowed, I'll share it. Um, Let's make it a little, uh, I mean, uh, you can just <laughs> not, explain not, not about the bug. Uh, yes, so uh, the copyright uh, build, uh, developer was using one of the plugins where the copyright was outdated. So two releases we worked together and he uh, did the same thing and I raised the same defect. Third time also, I knew mm -hmm. that he's gonna use the same thing. I didn't raise the defect. I just wrote a mail, change your installer, I mean API, uh, so that we will have an updated copyright. So this actually saved a lot of time for different projects because we were using same plugin for all the installer plugin for all the installers, uh, different installers of the same mm -hmm. product. So, so this is one of the special, though it has very less impact, but I feel it is huge and I got really good appreciation for this. So this is oh, one okay. thing. That's good. Okay. Okay. So next thing I would like to uh, more about the process oriented thing in terms of QA. So uh, some people say that, okay, the writing the test cases is not that important. We can ignore that. Some people say that, okay, no, it's really good for the documentation point of view and maybe in the a newcomer will get an idea about the about the application. So what do you think designing and maintaining maintenance of the test cases important or is just a waste of time? What do you, what's your opinion on that? Um, I'm yet to find a tester who is in love with writing test cases elaborated. I don't think we testers will have that luxury of time in the world to write elaborated test cases. But having said that, having a minimum documentation to start the project and to understand it is very important. You have to have FAQs, you have to have checklists, and you have to have pointers. It is not that expected result to be to the point. At least you can give some ideas. I, I will call not test cases as test ideas. 
that is those are very important and you tester has to do some homework it is not that spoon fed step a step b step c and expected result a b c d no that should not be the way because the systems are very complex and we have to do our homework and they are continuously evolving so test cases will be so you have done your homework mm -hmm. so let's you have done your homework but uh, the problem with the uh with the next time you are doing a lot of regression and a lot of new features got added and then uh, you are if you're not documenting it properly or uh, there are no test cases properly and then it will be really difficult for a newcomer they are not saying that okay yeah give me the spoon feeding or something like it but at least give me something so that i can have a complete workflow test cases over there that we used to do yes. that in old school time right that okay we you have to write yes. a thousand test cases is it really yes. feasible yes. these Details or uh, or do we mm -hmm. have any alternate ways of maintaining in, in different forms? That, yes, that is a very open question. We have scope for improvement over there. A strategy would be ideal, and I love Excel's Excel sheets because you will for each feature you will have the different checklists because checklists and to do lists are two things which I'm very good mm -hmm. at. Okay, because checklists will help us to know what exactly is the thing A B C D. Mm -hmm. Parts and again we will go back to uh, current current features and these kind of stuff. So um, X-ray, Rally, all these uh, management tools will help us to certain extent to address mm -hmm. this problem along with X-ray. Uh, sorry, along with uh, Excel. So I'm a big fan of Excel. Okay. I say. <laughs> okay. So are you using Zira? Currently, or uh, have you worked with Zira? Yeah, I find it very oh, difficult. Very yes, it is very mm -hmm. common, but uh, Zira it? has X-ray plugin for testers. Zira is basically a developer tool. It's not friendly for testers. Mm -hmm. That is my personal opinion. So there is a plugin called mm -hmm. X-ray. So that X-ray is very mm -hmm. useful. But I go with Rally. Rally, I somehow I like Rally more than Zira. Yeah, I have worked with Rally and Zira both, and personally, I would. Having the same feeling that Rally was much better because I, mean, I was in uh, Cisco that time we were using Rally over there. Anyway, that's good. Okay, so uh, I'll give you one more uh, situation over there. Let's say you have a a team, okay, a uh, so big team, and then uh, as a senior person, if I tell you that okay, hey, you have to handle multiple uh, modules over there, multiple projects over there. Within the team, there are multiple projects are going on. So uh, how will you handle this? And you have to uh, make sure that, okay, all the releases are happening on time, the testing and feature testing is happening on time, and you are the only a tester in multiple projects. Maybe one or two other people, uh, they will join you, but you are the most important person for the QA, senior QA guy. So how will you handle it? Or you will raise a concern that, okay, no, I cannot handle two projects together. Uh, definitely, I'll raise concern. It is not that I can't handle the things together but i'll make it clear that what are my deliverables and the clear communication is the key mm -hmm. otherwise what happens is you are come promising too many things and you are end of the day you are not able to do that should not be the thing so what and all is being covered it should be well and out in the open so that management knows mm -hmm. uh, and stakeholder knows that okay this is the thing and if we need some more people to test or if we need some extra help so then we can plan it accordingly so transparency mm -hmm. is the key okay so will you not even try at least just try with the multiple two projects so are you directly raise try. A no no i'll try okay it is not that okay directly i'll raise i'll write a bar, strong mail that okay i need some help and all those things no i'll definitely give a try it is going to be a very good uh, thing but context switching is i'm not so good at context switching because when you are testing mm -hmm. you have to have focus so i'm in favor mm -hmm. of deep work so context switching is little challenge for me why i'm asking this question because these days uh, there are situations where we have uh, uh, you know a limitation for the resources and we one person has to work with and we have some budget issues also frankly speaking sometimes it happens so uh, one person has to contribute for uh, maybe one or two projects or two or three projects like that so in that case i think uh, although i uh, what do you think is it really a good practice that uh, for a, one single project one dedicated qa should be there or what do you think about it? is it really a good practice or not it depends it depends on various factors how complicated is the system mm -hmm. that is the first thing because if you are in the mm -hmm. end of the end of 
that product life cycle itself you are taking it off from market there is no point in having a big qa team for that so it, it is a very open question so, and the okay. second thing would be um, yeah go ahead yeah okay so let's see if i ask you that okay this is a particular let's take a very simple example of login page okay we have a login page on any web application i'm expecting some really interesting good uh, test cases how will you test this particular feature a login feature it's it's a very common question right but i'm expecting something very interesting out of the box uh, test scenarios or test cases you will come up positive negative whatever you want to cover give me the best five test cases you are going to perform that for login page okay i'll use my paper and pen that should be fine. yeah you can just do that yeah yeah just write your uh, three four five bullet points and then just let me know first would be standard correct username correct password because if it is not working for mm -hmm. that itself then there is a big thing so and the second thing would be um uh, that permutation combination along with uh, what are the uh, standard I mean standard uh, password uh, strength and all those things okay and also mm -hmm. um, uh, security concerns because I'm not very bad good at security thing but there is a scope for security testing that uh, if you have key loggers how you will be deal with it you have a virtual keyboard and stuff like that so this is one of the because mm -hmm. these days uh, we have OTP we have multiple multi-factor authentication we have SSO so those things will come into picture. So I'll try to cover that also. I'm being hazardous in my mm -hmm. answer, but these are like uh, currently I'm getting all these ideas. What else? Give me two more. Give me the test cases. Let's not talk about the theoretical part. Okay. Just tell me the steps. That, okay. Yeah. This is what we we can do. That common username, password things like correct username, correct password. These are very common one. Everyone will do that. What will you do that okay, in terms of uh, testing that particular feature smartly and then out of the box scenarios? So let me give you one text tag, some basic text tag. Okay, let's see, we have one React web page, and in the back end, we have one basic uh, service uh, API we are calling that is, let's see, the login API, then we have service API, then and then we have, let's see, one Oracle database over there where the user information is there. So this is a very uh, simple plain text tag is there and we are using the common NTR architecture over there. So how will you test this particular uh, flow? Or you will just test everything from the front end side only? Not really. Uh, back end side also very much mm -hmm. needed from database perspective. We do need to test it from the database perspective. So uh, any data corruption happening mm -hmm. are the um, simple uh, testing of um, like how exactly data being stored and all those stuff so that is also been and and also the we are not storing the data. it's just a login feature we are not storing the data over there and let's concentrate on the login feature only uh, so whether my password is being uh, encrypted that also do i need to test it is mm -hmm. it covered there so tell me one thing what will happen when you write wrong username or maybe the right username and wrong password and when you click on login button how exactly the system is going to show you that uh, hey this is the wrong password what will be the flow no basically it should be like either it should not tell it's a wrong password is their username and correct or like you should not give hmm. a hint some error message is coming yeah. yeah some error message is coming over there let's see yeah just a so second let's see your uh, credentials are wrong or your username password is wrong something like this it's giving to you but when you click on login button after entering the wrong password what is happening in the back end um i don't recollect now mm -hmm. okay no worries okay that's fine so uh so let's say you have to write a very good bug report right a complete mm -hmm. a proper bug report not a typical bug report and uh, with the your practical experience how will you write a a nice a bug report okay let's say you have raised a uh, 30 issues okay in the regression so for 30 issues uh, give me a very compact report which is having all the information so what are the different information you will be writing for the books first thing is i'll have a standard format which will save me from uh, writing mm -hmm. redundant stuff so having uh, some simple notepad 
uh, standard title, these these things are. If you are targeting one particular model, have some steps already. So this is a tip which I want to uh, I I'll follow and it saves a lot of my time. So because bug mm -hmm. reports are something which has been which will be seen by management who don't have the access to what exactly is happening. So the title should be very crisp and clear and it has to have the message sense. I mean, it has to have the essence of the product. I mean, sorry, not product, that particular defect. And then version versioning is very important. What are the supporting platforms and uh, environment and mm -hmm. steps to reproduce and very important logs. What and all kinds of logs which are relevant, not like dbs of data but very much important and in case if as a tester if you are able to read the logs and pinpoint some some error logs then that would be add-on so that you can copy paste in the uh, description box or somewhere where you feel like and also one what more kind thing of logs? is what kind of logs i have seen some people they just uh, copy the log server logs and whatever the logs are coming in the back end and they just copy paste, paste but they don't understand that what you mean by log so what is your uh, selection criteria for the logs that okay yeah this could be the problem yes uh, this is this is a skill this is an art and it needs a lot of patience okay. and discussion with developers so here it would be like that particular module logs are one more uh, thing is like in if i'm particularly particularly testing uh, abcd module then module related logs will be there so that kind of granularity, we can have a discussion with developer that what and all kinds of logs we need for this particular thing. Mm -hmm. That checklist will be there. I mean, generally, I prepare a checklist. So again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going back to checklists and to-do lists. So uh, that will help me. OK. Did I answer your question? OK. OK, fine, no issues. So uh, let's see, assume that uh, we have one a basic application right mm -hmm. and uh, web application and uh, it should be compatible with different uh, browsers different operating systems and uh, how will you test it like uh, you have to certify on let's see five different browsers five different browser versions mac machine and uh, you need one a windows machine also so how will you uh, handle this uh, what are different steps you will perform to do the cross browser and cross platform testing this is where the traceability matrix and support matrix will be there so that we have to have it is not that on everything we are testing every every uh, test cases so mm -hmm. it, is, it is where intelligently we have to plan our test cases and our uh, plan our uh, uh, support scenarios where and all what and all the redundant tasks which we can avoid it and this this is very complex activity it takes a lot of time but trust me it saves a lot of time also so that matrix cre creating a matrix and support matrix is very important okay so you will uh, or you will do some smart work over there think about it like you have to check five you have 500 test cases on five different browsers versions on two platforms will you repeat the same thing again and again so tell me some good strategies that okay how will you divide your test cases on the basis of browsers and all what is your selection criteria in that case for the browsers Oh, it's a deep question. I need to uh, look into that. I mean, um, like um, test strategy would be uh, definitely I'm not going to repeat 500 test cases in a browser Chrome and uh, this, I mean, iOS browser or beat Mozilla or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it is not feasible so at all. What would be the issue? <laughs> okay, that's fine. I, I, I got your thing, but tell me what would be the issue that same uh, feature is working fine on chrome and same is not working on uh, firefox or maybe some other browser what could be the issue browser support uh, maybe we have development limitation or uh, it could be plugin like, issue what type or of limitation? Like... sorry what type of limitation um let me think mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'm not getting have at you, this uh, point, but have you seen the these kind of scenarios? I'm pretty much sure you must have done some cross browser testing. Yes, uh, okay. the, I have seen it, but I'm not able to recollect at this very moment uh, because these kind of mm -hmm. questions are deep questions and need some time to recollect mm -hmm. the data. Okay, 
So you talked about traceability matrix. What is traceability matrix? Basically, in testing, uh, we will have different platforms, and we will execute different test cases. We will create a matrix where what are all platforms we have tested, what are the versions which we have tested, and what are the how many test cases we have tested in that particular uh, combination permutation combination. So this will help us to optimize the uh, testing process as such. And also to root us in how will it optimize? You are just maintaining a simple matrix. Is I'm talking about let's see more talk about requirement traceability matrix. What do we mean RTA requirement traceability matrix RTM? Sorry, I'm talking requirement about requirement traceability matrix. Yeah, okay. Uh, so basically, what and all uh, suppose I have 10 requirements. Okay, for each requirement, how many test cases I have written, how many test scenarios I have covered. So that will give the data of that and and, and it will help me to mm -hmm. rule out if I'm missing any requirement to be tested. So that will help me uh, that way. Okay, we but, are tracing uh, back logic. Mm -hmm. But earlier you said that uh, I'm not a person who maintains all the test cases. So how will you justify our traceability matrix over there that okay against all the requirement points? Let's see, we have R1, R2, R3, these are number of points, and these are the test cases you have written against this. How will you make sure that okay, nothing is missed okay, from the requirement or from the user story or acceptance criteria? Nothing is missed from your side. How will you justify that? It's a very good question. Um, so here, justification in the sense like, uh, first I have to go through all the uh, requirements mm -hmm. thoroughly. Without that, if I don't do that, uh, I will not be able to come up with compact test cases or test ideas as such. So mm. the analysis is the answer. I mean, analysis is the key. See, the, don't you think there is a risk is always involved? We always do a risk analysis over there against the uh, requirement, whatever the business requirement that we have. If we are not maintaining such uh, mattresses or maybe some QA mattresses or RTM, against the requirement or against acceptance criteria the risk is always there either you are doing it manual testing or or through automation if you're maintaining it also in automation also we have to maintain manual test cases mapping versus automation test cases we have certain tools are available and certain strategies are available so don't you think it will be a big risk because uh, when someone wants to really do an investigation and then the most important thing about the coverage how will you uh, calculate your test coverage over there you getting a point so what do you mean by test coverage what do you understand by test coverage uh, basically how many features you are covering in that particular testing or how many how 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 good is your test cases to tell that okay your product is this good that once i complete this test cases it is mm -hmm. user usable it is i mean it is good to release kind of stuff Maybe I'm not answering definition, but uh, this is my understanding. No, I'm, I'm not expecting any theoretical or bookish definition. I just want to know what what is your uh, thought process about all these things. Okay, tell me one thing. You talked about test coverage. That okay? That how much percentage that we have covered in terms of test cases designing against the requirement? Seventy percent, thirty percent, or eighty percent coverage like that. Let's say you are doing your regression testing and you estimate it for three days for the regression testing. You've uh, three, four team members are there, and then uh, I'm the I'm the manager or I'm the I'm the client. I'm saying that okay, hey, next day I'm asking okay, hey, uh, how much testing is left? How much is completed? What will you answer for that? That's a very good question. Um, along with numbers of test cases are uh, executed, our number of defects which have been logged, I'll come up with the observations made along with uh, what are the risk factors as a tester i foresee uh, so this would be uh, like uh, not like okay i have executed 10 test cases there are 15 pending no i'll not give this straightforward answer there will be mm -hmm. multiple layers of answers uh, multiple layers one is as i said um, observations made which could be the potential risks mm -hmm. and those kind of i'll come up with as much data as possible so that customer will understand that what is the quality of the product that is the whole intention of the risk. I mean, so when you give uh, give the answer, okay, yeah, thirty percent testing is done, seventy percent is left. That percentage like is very um, mm -hmm. tricky because uh, it was it mm -hmm. is like Decker Lewis for me. I'll not give direct answer. I'll give like uh, kind of diplomatic answer. 
Okay. Okay. So let's see now you are uh, your testing is almost done. That app is looking good. And uh, what will be the final uh, call or what will be the final thing you will discuss with your team before giving the sign off? Right. So before giving the sign off that, okay, yeah, testing is done from our side. Everything is good to go. So before that, what will you discuss with your team? Uh, you meant to say discussion as in not related to process and all discussion in terms point? of uh, what are different things you will ask from your team because you are not the only person that who is testing everything Correct. Correct. there are other uh, four members are also, also there including you who is also doing the testing over there so what is the discussion what kind of uh, uh, things you will ask from your team members before giving a sign off one simple question i ask that is it worth that mm -hmm. you are going to spend money on uh, the product which we are going to release because that will show us the confidence and the product. So if it is mm -hmm. yes, quick yes, then I think, okay, it's a good product and good testing has been done. It's more of like psychology, not not like. Uh, but psychological things not um, may not work every time, right? We need a data for that. We need something on the paper. The I'll give you an example. Let's see, one there. person is there. One person is there, let's say he was responsible for order management system in your application. That was a very critical module. And then um, he just bypassed a couple of important use cases because that was so boring manually. And then he just bypassed and then, uh, you know, skipped those test cases and nobody was aware of it. You ask the same question psychologically that, okay, hey, everything is fine. He said, yeah, everything is fine. And then you give a sign off. As a mm. senior person, what is your responsibility to how will you check it that okay that whatever he has done is correct or not or whatever he has done is completed or not this is unfortunate situation because as a team we trust each other though we are testers we have to trust somewhere but at the mm -hmm. same time looking at the data doing everyday management is the key it is not that okay blindly allow the person they have to raise regular PEPTA, sorry regular meetings status meetings that is the whole purpose of those mm -hmm. things so uh, we won't allow this to happen as such because in end of the day if I'm telling that okay I have missed the critical part or I didn't get the time to uh, do priority one test cases then no it is strictly not acceptable so first we, our strategy would be very simple first would be priority zero test cases then priority one and then two three if we have time so I don't think this situation test cases. test cases as in test ideas I said so mm -hmm. see okay. test cases it is okay. again debatable mm -hmm. okay yeah it's just debatable but we need something uh, okay on paper we before giving the sign off if someone is asking you you should have something that okay yeah as a client uh, they are not bothered about it okay you have time or not they bother about what is your deliverance from the qa side right so when you give a sign off what is your responsibility in terms of uh, how many coverage you have tested how many test cases you executed how many scenarios you have covered yeah so anyways that's i think that's fine that um, uh, we can cover some checklist something like this as you said we can definitely maintain some format like that okay so i have uh, last two questions i would like to ask that the so what exactly uh, how exactly you're preparing and what exactly you're preparing uh, you know in terms of because you have already crossed eight plus years of experience in the industry and then uh, uh what are you learning to improve your skill set to improve your uh, technical skills in terms of testing in terms of tools in terms of technologies what exactly you're doing i'm doing many things uh first thing is having uh, with this area of experience it is both both the ways advantages and disadvantages as well because i'm not directly from uh, automation background people will expect something so for me i have to go back to basics i'm working on that so i'm following a couple of basic stuff and doing mini projects and second thing is uh, watching a lot of uh, channels youtube channels and going through different blogs developer blogs and also online virtual conferences mm -hmm. are happening across where it will give us the ideas mm -hmm. ideas are very important uh, than being bookish knowledge or uh, real time implement i mean sorry uh, and also talk to different people different developers and understand their pain mm -hmm. points that will help me to know as a tester how can i help them how can i help uh, mm -hmm. make the product better so i have a lot of good friends who generally take uh, 
time to talk to me because i'm on a break so i don't interact with my colleagues and all right so i have to fill that gap so i'm doing these kind of mm -hmm. things hope this works mm -hmm. so last question that uh, what is the reason why did you uh, choose this career as a testing there are a lot of debate and a lot of um, people they always raise a concern and raise a question on testing folks that okay hey so do you think it's a low profile or do you think it's a uh, underrated profile or do you think uh, testing has uh, no great future what do you think what's your opinion on that it is very much underrated and now we are living in corona and we have been hearing testing 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 right so testing is important mm -hmm. without test in god we trust rest all we test that is what i can say mm -hmm. and the uh, testers mm -hmm. we generally feel inferior because we don't code as such but initially mm -hmm. okay but as you grow in your career you understand testing is not just uh, one particular thing that expect uh, raising defects and all it is much beyond that understanding the risks helping customers interacting with different teams so it is mm -hmm. very interesting career and i love testing okay one last thing i would uh, would like to ask that uh, do you have any experience on uh, cicd pipelines uh, jenkins any exposure on the cloud <clears throat> cloud platforms that how you do a deployment build and do are you involved in those kind uh, of activities like build and deployment pipelines or all something uh, like this as i said i have seen people doing it but personally i have not got a chance to do it that is why i'm doing mini projects to do kubernetes in deployment on my own and installed ubuntu recently so doing all these activities on my own uh, so just to get the feel of it okay okay good okay uh so i think that that's all from my side over there i have written all the um you know whatever positive and then um not negative i would say improvement points i have written uh, from my side so uh first before uh, we finish i would like to know from your side that where exactly you're lacking okay in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, testing or in terms of any specific uh, area are you lacking somewhere or you feel that okay no you're absolutely right and good to go no i'm not feeling i'm absolutely right and good to go mm -hmm. because there is always scope for improvement specifically uh, with with mm -hmm. terms of key things uh, like uh, key practices i do, i do need to be aware like root cause analysis and stuff like that deeper level mm -hmm. like fishbone and all those stuffs so that i should mm -hmm. be aware of and then very importantly my automation skills i have to really give give a good uh, uh, effort on that and uh, mm -hmm. anyways communication is always improvement is always there so i see mm -hmm. i have to improve a good. lot okay so let's uh, i think the interview is over now i really don't want to grill you don't worry about that and i think it's was good you. and uh, let's talk about your positive points over here i've written first of all you have a really good uh, communication skills, skills that is a very good plus point and uh, uh, you uh, Uh, pick up the words uh, really good that i really liked it another thing is that you have a good character and good testing mindset i can see that right and that you the way you said that okay yeah the, you will do some root cause analysis and then you are very honest about it when you when i ask about uh, how will you handle the situation if someone is blaming you the management is blaming you that okay no qa miss the work so you said that okay yeah we will i'll be honest and own it and then i'll take the ownership for that and next time we will take care of it and then you said we will improve the coverage and we will prepare the checklist Uh, like that so you have a good testing attitude and good um, i would say a uh, uh, matured attitude in terms of testing that i really liked it and then you said okay you will follow some certain templates and then that is again more practical things that uh, you will be doing in terms of let's see uh, uh, bug format you will maintain so that you can save some time over there and some you know to publish the report beforehand and then you will discuss with your team and then all those things these are good points now let's talk about some improvement points that is first line you said that okay i'll be working as an individual contributor see individual contributor you can i think according to me you can uh, uh, ignore uh, this particular part to say that at a time of interview because individual contributor according to me if you're working in a hardcore automation work let's see or let's you are a specific or specialized performance engineer right performance engineering uh, candidate so in that case uh, you don't need to you know work much with the team you your work is totally uh, isolated and totally working in a silo and then uh, working like that only so but you are a testing guy you are a tester where you have to collab and more and more so it should be reflected in your uh, the way you are uh, explaining at a time of interview also so that 
uh, otherwise i'm having two minds in my mind that okay no she can work as an individual contributor or because you you told her you prefer individual contributor but ultimately you have to work with a team all right so that was a little contradict i hope you are getting it right what exactly i'm saying second thing is that you said coverage uh, you will be uh, improving with respect to uh, rca but maybe you can add some more extra flavor over there some more spices like what are different coverage techniques you will be using like fish bone and then you said that okay i'll be uh, you could have said that okay i'll be adding in my test case and especially highlight with a tag over there that okay yeah this is the production bug we got last time and so that next time we will have to make sure that we have to test it so that uh, next time we will not miss it and we will do some regression testing around that bug also so such techniques you can add that over there so that otherwise what exactly you are, we are just uh, maybe sometime while giving the answer you are just talking very uh, high level things let's get into deeper side what different techniques suggestions solutions you will be doing it i think that will be good then i asked you one question that okay two projects will you handle two projects so uh, first uh, you said that, okay yeah i'll try to take this challenge i'll try to uh, take this particular opportunity and if the projects are related to, to the same domain and then it could be a good opportunity it could be a nightmare also sometimes that you are not getting enough time but i liked it the way you handled it that okay yeah that uh, i really want to focus on the specific uh, specific project only specific problem only but see what happens sometimes management they really want to use your knowledge use your experience and use you okay with different projects so you can handle in a smart way at a time of interview diplomatically like uh, yeah i can handle that i can do that but i would like to uh, first i will try definitely for sure that but maybe i can manage my time maybe 70% in that particular project and 30% in that particular project as a consultant or maybe as a as a uh, i can provide my guidance because i have the knowledge okay if we don't have any budget for or maybe for time being i can do that for next 3 4 months once the budget is allocated or once we hire a new resource maybe that time i just transfer the kt and then again come back to the previous project so like this you can handle the situation it looks more elegant when you give the answer at the time of interview you are handled both the situations together don't say bluntly that okay that uh, no uh, uh, i cannot do that i just want to focus only one thing that is fine absolutely fine you really want to do that but how exactly you are presenting at a time of interview that you i think you can maybe a little bit improvement i see over there right then a lot of issues in between uh, you will maintain a checklist and then maintain a test case i know there are a lot of uh, debates are happening people are getting influenced with a lot of conversation and then about the test cases we should maintain or not so what you feel uh, right first of all second thing is that because the moment you say i'll just maintain one checklist then other questions then requirement rate traceability matrix uh, test execution cycle what will you uh, how will you tell that okay what is the coverage that you have covered tell me the coverage if you don't have those matrices so the base is at least somewhere so we have to maintain some test cases over there that will be as a senior person someone is expecting that okay yeah maybe uh, a new person is coming into the project so that they will also have some basic level of test cases at least we have that so there you can do some smart work no need to write all the steps one by one launch the url enter the browse uh, username password no need to do that at least we can maintain some a very good micro level uh, objects you can uh, objectives you can maintain over there instead of writing all the steps over there so that my positive negative scenarios will be covered accordingly like that and then it it can be it can get reviewed by a po and the developer lead or something like this and then we can justify that like this i think that would be a better answer because see that is your opinion might be possible that okay other people they don't think in that way might be they are uh, you know writing a lot of test cases over there so if you are handling both the situations together you are putting your point as well as you putting his point also you know respecting his point also i think that will be a good a good thing to handle at a time of interview when you join over there then maybe you want to do something over there or you want to change something that is a different story altogether you don't know what exactly will happen over there this is just what uh, interview point of view i'm talking about you get a point right yeah right and then some small small things like browser versions i told you that okay so how will you handle that and first of all that you have to tell that okay i'll procure those devices i'll procure those machines <clears throat> right if i said okay firefox 87 85 90 and firefox 53 also so are you going to install uninstall again and again on the same machine no 
So first of all, as a senior person, I'm expecting that okay, you will talk to the management, you will procure it for the team, and then um, download respective versions over there and test it over there. And then how will you do? How will you design the strategy over there? For example, you can say that okay, that uh, then I ask you one question that how will you get to know that this bug is what is the reason behind that? This is fine on Chrome. This is fine on Firefox. I'm expecting some technical answer over there. So maybe in that area you can just look into it and then try to answer more a little more technical you know updates what could be the reason maybe the uh, css or the classes or the javascript written by the developer is not compatible for that particular version that could be the issue look and feel is same but when you click on the button pop up is not coming or maybe the data is not getting updated maybe some javascript issue on the on the client side and then uh, event is not getting handled properly on that particular browser so like that you just try to give your answer accordingly okay then i think uh, you are good you uh, in terms of uh, coverage in terms of uh, test status and fee because you are applying for eight years or nine years experience so these are the questions i'm not asking a typical testing questions with you not okay how will you you know write the test case i'm not asking because you know that okay how we write the test cases i'm more about the more situational based test cases otherwise i think uh, you are good to go we have a good positive attitude and uh, I'm pretty much sure that okay, the interviewer will uh, will definitely enjoy having the conversation with you. And mm -hmm. only one thing that a little bit more to the point, crisp and clear cut answer and to the point. And then I ask about the automation. Then it could be a little negative for you. I won't say negative, but we could see that uh, we say that okay, yeah, what is the use of automation? Do we really need automation? That is again the you know debatable topic happening on different social media and let's let's not get influenced by them just we have to crack the interview that is the main important thing right so people are expecting that okay after 10 years what exactly you're doing in terms of tools and technologies how will you save your time for example i told you 500 test cases so you could the, the best answer would be like i could have automated that right i could have sure. automated those things so that would be an impressive thing okay yeah this person actually understands the technology also understand the uh, automation the benefit of automations also like that you could have said okay I, I create small small utilities in that way so that i can quickly check all these things at daily basis uh, my patches or sanity automation i can do that and no need to execute on the, all the browsers i just execute a 20 30 important test cases through automation on multiple browsers and running all the day all together so that we will get a better idea I, I can save some time and i can concentrate on majorly on chrome browser Another point you can add over there that first of all that the best answer for this question is that for cross browser testing I'll check the production data. Right the customer are 80 percent let's see customer are using Google Chrome. So by the first criteria the most important browser for me is from the data oh. analytics from the customer data on Chrome and then Firefox or then maybe Opera or maybe Safari or some other browsers. So give certain you know reasons behind that that why do you want to how smart do you want to do that? So I was expecting that answer from you. Same thing we do it at, okay, like uh, we do prefer iOS app or Android app in US. In US, let's see, majority of the crowd is coming on and Europe, majority of the crowd is coming on iOS app. 80% of the customer base are based out of iOS app. And then I'm spending more time on Android. That is not a smart work, right? So better I'll spend more time on iOS. I'll do the automation iOS first. And then for Android, I can, uh, spend less amount of time as compared to iOS because the customer is important for me okay the customer base is important so try to give more and more practical things over there that is the uh, uh, advice and uh, yeah you we were talking about automation so please um, you know don't say very straightforward that okay i'm still learning automation just say that okay yeah you do practice in that way that you can justify your experience in terms of automation at least two to three years right i know that okay you don't have any experience in automation that's why i didn't ask any automation technical questions this is purely based uh, on your skill set and everything but after 10 years after nine years people will expect that level of a little bit of maturity in terms of uh, you know overall uh, uh, things okay. that yeah at least having some basic knowledge your other team members are having uh, automation experience they are designing the framework and you are handling them and if you don't understand that that is again a mismatch and then they will start complaining that okay no we need a a technical manager over there we need a, who can understand my situation right so that's why people, you, people management is also looking for a long-term thing from you they're going for interview 
if you're going for interview after five years or six years, that is not a problem. If you don't have that level of automation experience, also fine, you can learn. But after 10 years, people will expect some basic stuff like performance. Let's say I ask the question that, okay, when I click on login button, what will happen in the backend? It was a very straightforward answer that you can simply explain about the, some basic backend or API process over there. After 10 years, people will expect that, right? So just, you know, improve your uh, technical areas also. This will help you a lot. Okay, because I'm pretty much sure you're targeting some really good companies. And uh, in fact, these days, all the companies, they're asking, uh, you know, certain questions. Otherwise, uh, you're uh, testing and other things and then are good to go. And uh, just one last point, try to give some more examples when you were explaining about a specific scenario. Let's see, I told you that, uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you that uh, the login scenario, uh, right? So the login scenario, where will you store the data? In login, we don't store the data. The data is already True. there. Your name, Naveen, is already there in the back end. I just checked it, okay, yeah, this user is there or not. The, the, the active user is true or false. A Boolean flag I'll be maintaining, something like this. If the API is returning yes, yeah, Naveen is there, then I'll allow to do that. And then otherwise, I will not allow to do that. Something like this, you can prepare the answer like that. Okay, you have any questions to ask? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, first thing is, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And the second thing is, generally, this is a mock interview, so I, I'm not asking any question like mm -hmm. what is the work culture and all those things. But generally, uh, mm -hmm. we do need to answer, ask a couple of questions that shows that we have done our homework. And uh, mm. uh, that is very yeah, important. So, uh, you can see, uh, that's a very good thing. Um, it's in a mock and then I think uh, let me tell you that when somebody is asking that okay, at a time of interview that do you have any question don't say bluntly that I don't have that you, the way you said right now right yeah definitely I have a couple of questions so it shows your curiosity over there that okay yeah this person is actually more curious about to know about us about uh, about the application that we are using it you could give a simple example if you're going for Amazon or you're going for some startup and they're having some mobile app then uh, you can say that, okay, yeah, I have downloaded your app and I tried to test a couple of features and I found maybe this could be some improvement or this, this is the bug in your application. It gives a very positive impact. You can simply say that, okay, hey, can I share one thing? I've already downloaded your app. So this guy will think that, okay, yeah, when he will give the feedback to the HR, he will mention those things to the next round or to the manager that, okay, hey, this person has actually did some research or homework on our app. I think it's a good fit. It shows that okay, your attitude for the company and for the uh, for the product culture. that okay you are looking for, like that exactly the culture fit exactly we say that, and then you can ask about the team size, the kind of work you are doing. Don't ask uh, very in depth questions. Don't ask about the what kind of modules you have about the application because it's very confidential. Nobody will tell you. But yeah, ask about the team, ask about the release process, ask about the automation framework. What is your contribution in terms of automation will be there? Or do I need to handle a team or uh, individual contributor kind of role or what so ask certain questions there is no harm in that one favorite question is how would the, uh, my i mean what would be the ideal day of a tester so that will cover the entire uh, complexities or entire activities which they are mm -hmm. expecting from a tester so that is one way mm -hmm. to understand their mindset yeah. their expectations correct, correct, correct. Great, great, great. Then they might ask the quest question that uh, how soon you can join and then um, you can simple, then you know the things. I don't want to get into those things. And uh, and one thing that uh, 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 people will ask you that, okay, uh, why should I hire you? You know, as a, as a tester, why should I hire you? So how you are different from others? Right? So just show your confidence over there. You don't say, that, okay, I don't want to compare with others. That's fine. That's a very, very, uh, you know, very positive answer that you have given on the books. It looks good. According to me, that is my personal opinion. You can show your confidence over there. That, okay, yeah, I'm prepared enough and I'm pretty much sure that, okay, I can do uh, better than others. Like that, in a positive way, you can say that. Okay, but I think that's not a problem. The way you said, absolutely fine. I don't like as such, no big problem. Your body language is good. Your communication is good. And uh, you have that patience to... Uh, listen and then give the answer do not interrupt that you don't do that i think these things are absolutely fine and don't show and you don't show that attitude also and that aggression that no you know everything and you don't have that i factor only me factor you and you that okay no i know the things 
the way you after listening the question the way you are saying that uh, yeah that's a very good question that you asked it's a very tricky question that you asked it means you are giving uh, a respect to the question right in cricket we say that okay if someone is bowling we said okay yeah we am giving a respect to the bow okay i'm just putting the okay uh, you know i'm just not trying for a shot over there i'm just respecting that particular bowler and the bowling also so that is the same thing you are respecting that's very good attitude that's a very good thing actually um, uh, interview will definitely will like that okay so yeah so i think just prepare on these uh, whatever the improvement points uh, as such no negative big negative things absolutely fine try to be more and more uh, technical more and more about uh, uh, examples and i'm pretty much sure uh, no one will uh, stop you to crack the interviews thank you thank you so much navin this actually helped me initially i was thinking whether to go for it or not but good that i came for this thank you so much for that thanks okay, a lot thank you i'll see you then bye bye yeah